Welcome. The topic of this video is how to install Arch Linux D. Some things have changed and I need a little bit of explanation. Super F7 is going to launch my virtual box. ISO is in here and I'm going to boot up with a control F. I'm full screen. And as usual, you can decide um, what line you need for your hardware. Basically, I think 90% of the people will just use this one but you can always uh, try the other ones and even edit them with a tap. So tap and then you see the code inside and you can type in more information after. And then press enter, escape to get out, arrow up, enter. We've chosen the first line. Articlelinux.com is giving you lots of articles about the pre-installation phase, uh, bias, how to burn an ISO to USB and so on. So to check it out. Once you've done that and you can boot, you'll be presented with a minimal kind of XFCE. It's our delivery system. We deliver your operating system through a minimal XFCE. It applies as well on the Arch Linux Bs, right? So this is Arch Linux D. The D is the most bare one. This is a really very minimal ISO. And we are greeted with our Arch Linux welcome app. You check out all the important links. They're all important. And you can join us on the social media. Or if you want to ask some questions that are Arch Linux related, that's Discord. If you just want to chat or talk about anything really, that's the casual talk, that's Telegram. We have this app to advise and it all depends what you have, of course, if you have Windows installed or for complex uh, uh, setups with multiple Linux versions. But general rule is if you want to install without any fault, without issues, run Gported, start with a clean slate and then uh, start installing your operating system. So like I said, it all depends what you'll find in here, what partitions you have. Make sure you have the selected the right uh, hard disk because people can have an SSD and an hard disk that's the data drive, for instance. Do select the right drive because you're going to format everything. You're going to delete everything. You would do it anyway with Calamaris, but Gparted is a way to stand still a moment and think, what am I going to do with my system? Certainly, if you have Windows installed, you have to think about these things. Anyway, decide what you want to remove by clicking on it and click on the trash can. Delete this. If you have more partitions you want to remove, click them as well. And in the end you say, let's remove everything. Are you sure you want to apply the pending operations? Delete. Lots of data. Check again, think again, check up here, correct hard disk, fine. Then you apply it. Then everything is, is cleaned out. It's, it's like it was never formatted ever. It's like coming out of uh, the shop, your hard disk. If that's out of the way, you can start thinking about running Calamaris. Now, we have made sure that um, this app is going to tell you, hey, you don't have internet. So if, perchance, you have a laptop and you do not plug in a cable, a LAN cable, then you will not have internet. Maybe. It all depends if you're connected to the Wi-Fi yet. So before you run Calamaris, make sure you have internet, the app will say, you don't have internet. Calamaris will not install additional software. Quite important because there are lots of things to install later on. So internet is back, no message. Then we run Calamaris because we know we can install more stuff later on. We are connected to the internet. What's important as well, Let's quickly do this for reference for the future. And we can actually install in our second screen LibreOffice here with a locale. So whatever language you choose here, he's going to look for a LibreOffice in Spanish later on. It will install LibreOffice Spanish or um, German or French or anything, right? Just choose your language here. It will change, of course, your 
choice here, your, your names here. Doesn't really change that thought. Okay, this changes. So everything changes and American English is the one I'm gonna stick with. So whatever language you choose in Calamares is gonna be the LibreOffice. Okay, next. You can make choices and there's a lot, seems to be a lot of choices in Article XD and let's go over them. It is not that complex once explained. If you've seen already the video of made an installation for Arco Linux, you see this part is the same. This part is the same. What's new in Arco Linux D is the part where you choose the desktop. It's the part where you choose the login manager. But let's go over everything. The first line is where you say, I am currently on my machine, on my ISO here that you've downloaded, there is a kernel and it's fixed in time, it's, it's frozen in time. When I reboot, I would like to have the very last kernel available. That's this option. But maybe you have a problem with the kernel because of the hardware you've bought and you need a Linux LTS to, be, to, to have a stable system. Then you select this one. Now it becomes even more um, related to your hardware. That's the NVIDIA choice. You have chosen to buy or uh, to use NVIDIA. Well, then you figure out my particular card needs the NVIDIA package or it needs the NVIDIA 390. And again, you choose the Linux kernel or the Linux LTS, whatever works best for you. So it's all about choices, this, this entire a screen is about choosing what's best for you. If you want Intel U code, CPU is Intel or AMD, then you choose those, right? And then we have something new. So the new part, the new part is saying, okay, what if you want a different login manager? Maybe you know that LightDM is on all our ISOs, 18 ISOs of them have all LightDM. There are people who say, I would like to have SDDM. Why not? Well, here's the choice. Just click on it and what will be installed, the package SDDM, All right? It's just a choice that's available to be installed or not. Yes, we do have noticed uh, the copy paste here that went from. So enable SDDM, enable GDM, enable LXDM. Next time that will be gone. So we can actually, and that's also important for you to know maybe, you can actually install all four of them. It will not conflict. It's just a file, a folder done. But what is important in the end is you deciding what to activate to enable. What should Linux do? Should it enable this one or that one or that one? It's just one choice. It can be only one. I'm choosing Login Manager, LightDM, as usual. Then it's up to you to decide, I would like to have the awesome desktop. We get already some of the package, but not all of the package. Depending on the desktop, you still may need to go to the GitHub and Git clone something to get the sound, the Bluetooth, the printers, certainly Samba. But depending on the desktop, Plasma is known to be a very complete desktop, you already have sound. All right, so it all depends what you select in here that maybe you still need to go to the Git clone, but that's part of the Sherlock Holmes um, well, view to figure out what Lego blocks you'd like and need to have a working system. Let's keep it simple. Um, this time, let's install XFCE. You can say, I want to have XFCE, great, but you know what, I'm gonna theme it myself. Thank you, Arco Linux. Great look, but I'm going to make it myself. I'm going to theme it myself. Great. Now, that's one thing you can do. The other thing is, what if I can't decide? I'm going to take Mate as well. But you know what? I'm going to try again, figure out myself what I need. There will be no keyboard shortcuts. There will be no 
icons and themes and all that, it will be as you were in phase five, installing Arch Linux, the Arch way, archlinuxd.com. So options, options, choices, choices. It's great to have all these choices and it's important, well, to remember that you need to select something here. So the first thing is login manager, right? Login manager, choose one of them, choose all, all of them, but you can only enable one. Choose your desktops you want to install. I'm gonna take Mate and XFCE. Why? Because they're desktops and not tiling winner managers. With the tiling winner manager, you always need to do scale afterwards, after installation, always scale. Remember that already. And we wanna see what this looks like. What is a Arch Linux look of Mate and XFCE? Let's not install Arch Linux. We can still do that later sudo pacman minus s install it so if you've uh, chosen like so let's go over it again one login manager a desktop or two maybe just one maybe something extra from here chromium for example and then we go and install it we go for a next we go check if it's correct Normally it's correct, but if the server is down for maintenance on KDE, then you won't see the button there. Or else you just select here. Maybe change the system language or the numbers down here. And then we go for next. Choose your keyboard, choose it wisely. Always easier here than setting it up later. And then we decide. We have used gparted so we don't see anything in colors in pieces like that in blocks right everything is black we erase the disk we choose whatever we want with swap without swap big swap small swap that's the choice here it means that if your memory is starting to get full it can use this particular partition to to get some extra space or memory and this one is actually to go to hibernate to shut down and reboot later on. So those options are available, three of them, plus encrypt or not encrypt, so six of them. The Arch Linux I have encrypted, so the video you can watch that one. So this one, Arch Linux D, I will not encrypt it. No swap since I'm on VirtualBox, I do not have the space to do this for instance. Half of it is almost gone. So I'm gonna go for no swap. Next, my name, name of the computer, password, and decide if you wanna log in automatically without asking for password or use the same password. Eh? Both options you choose. Next, and install, and then we wait. Till the system says here filling up file systems and then you can walk away everything is fine everything will be installed and let's pause the video here and we'll be back shortly all right he's finished with a control f we're going full screen again and we restart Arcanix D is still pretty much the same as before but we got lots of more freedom to test out things and to play around with different kind of applications lego blocks so to speak you end up in a terminal as usual you end up something black the tty you log in and you see neofetch greeting you there are two things to remember that's it two things sudo system let's type it sudo system ctl enable and then enable something you decided to have a display manager sdm gdm lxdm or in my case lightdm that's it remember what you selected enable it password is required and check out the line it says created symlink created not failed it often happens people that are switching between 
um, these display managers, there can be only one. And if you want to overwrite something that's there already, then you need to force it. So minus F force is overwriting whatever is already present. So that's a neat thing to remember. Second thing is scale. If you're on a tiling window manager, if you've chosen, chosen awesome BSP, WM and so on and so many others, then the configuration is in ETC scale, not in your home directory, in your booting from your home directory. With an SR, sudo reboot, we're booting back up. That's all you need to remember, two things. Enable whatever display manager we have and scale or do not scale. In this case, I have a real desktop. I do not have a tiling window manager. I do not scale and see what I get. This is Mate. Let's take a look at how Mate looks out of the box on Arch Linux. This is as if you would do phase five. Arch Linux installation, the Arch way, skipping the, the several phases and ending up in a screen like this. This is the look we get. These guys are always going to be installed. We need to develop, right? In the internet, there's one Firefox. We always need this one. We need to look something up. We need to type something. We need to compare something, basically. And this is what I just selected on Calamaris as extra, right? But this is the real look from Mate. Nothing has been changed. Now let's log out because we have two desktops. We can decide to have a second, a third. Well, we have 15 desktops. And then you log back in, decide to have XFCE. And we get this kind of look. So we've done a lot of changes with our XFCE. This is the standard look of XFCE. And that's the fun of it. Now you can start tweaking it yourself, right? You can change it yourself, start installing applications, making keyboard shortcuts, because none of these things will work, right? Ctrl Alt T luckily in this one works. Now, as such, at this point in time, we've not done any scale. And it's interesting to know and to learn what is in scale. Go to your file system at this point with the selection we've made, go and investigate because this is a little bit a Sherlock Holmes story. You need to be a little bit a detective and investigate what do we have. If I type scale, first of all, does scale exist? Yes, our Bash RC is present. We can copy paste everything of these guys over. What's inside the .config is the welcome app to auto start it and NeoFetch. And NeoFetch you can immediately show you already. NeoFetch is not looking normally. I mean, what's this thing here, right? So we do a scale, we do a control T and we see that the version number is finally there. And this virtual box thing, it's gone. So that's how you go and, and investigate whatever choices you've just made in Arc Linux D and play around with it. It's gonna be awesome. So that's it for me, guys. Enjoy Arc Linux D and all the choices and uh, variants you can start making and uh, have fun. Cheers.